Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Dickinson, and you're listening to Camera Concerts. Our performer today is a musician who's using his music to spread a positive message. Please welcome to our virtual stage, Scott Seisler. What these woman's secret hands And curse one man across the land He looks with sorrow, smells of sweet Shallow waters by his feet And silver sweat strips down and out Soak like blood upon the drought You will wash as he'll wash through Give him flesh and teeth and bone Cross with him tonight on the darkest flat by night, and out out the candle go where she stops. Nobody knows just a step to set you free. And which is cursed melody? Premonitions I can't go back. Life is just a heart attack. Well, secret passage, so shall find classic story of mankind. Win the battle, lose the war Evil's knocking at your door You try so hard, it drives you mad Worst dream that you've ever had Dark eternal haggish band And curse one man across the land You cross with him tonight On the darkest flat by night and out, out the candle go Where she stops, nobody knows Just a step to set you free And witches curse it, melody Premonitions, I can't go back Life is just a heart attack Betrayal, it's not what I had in mind It's making me miserable It's making my life unwind I'm looking for someone to show me the way I'm lost and I can't get out it's happening every day manipulation is the key to this woman's fantasy she will make you wish it's true she will tell you what to do you're the one with all the greed you're the one that makes him bleed You're the one who wants the throne So give him flesh and teeth and bone you cross with him tonight On the darkest flat by night And out, out the candle go Where she stops, nobody knows Just a step to set you free and witches curse it, melody Premonitions I can't go back Life is just a heart attack Well, you'll cross with him tonight On the darkest flat by night And out, out the candle goes Where well, she stops, nobody knows Just a step to set you free And witches curse it, melody Premonitions, I can't go back. Life is just a heart attack. Scott Seisler, welcome to the program. Thank you, Andrew. It's really great to be here, and I'm, I'm very thankful that you uh, picked me for this. Well, no, you, you've uh, been really um, nice to get to know over the last couple of years, and I, I guess that we met, actually, I guess it's been a couple of years now. Uh, you came over to the college and we had a, a really nice conversation. You were interested in the audio program and um, you've, you've actually you know, been taking classes at the college, but you have a really interesting uh, musical background. And I was wondering if you could start us off by telling us a little bit about that. Well, as a kid, you know, I played the trumpet in the band and through high school and then got out of high school and actually, uh, started playing the guitar in the, in the in the early 90s and I was inspired by Nirvana Kurt Cobain the unplugged version and then I learned that 
eventually I moved to New York City, pursued an acting, a little bit of an acting career with my wife, Christine, and she ended up being more of the actress and did a couple Law and Order stints. And I ended up doing some music and stuff. And uh, I met a guy, Aaron, uh, who we formed a band called Black Rooster. I was the drummer and he was the singer. And then uh, uh, we we uh, we were we were seeing some success up there and had a lot of fun and then he moved off to Boston and then I kind of went solo and I started writing and then I had a a tragedy my uh, my brother I committed suicide and uh, which led me to write uh, Miss the Last which we're going to talk about later and I think that's where it started my musical journey and I I, I released an EP on my own which was really short and then I moved to Maryland full time and actually. Uh, met you and then formed uh, a band down here and we recorded a, a full-length album uh and we did the music video of miss the last uh, which is the song i wrote about sean's suicide and we created a video to tell the story and it was filmed locally here with and um, the band is local also and after we formed the band the scott seisler band we had some success uh we opened for Sister Hazel in New York City at the uh, Sony Hall, and we opened up for the Bacon Brothers also at Sony Hall. It was a lot of fun, and that's where I am, and now I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, and, and for uh, listeners who don't know the Bacon Brothers, uh, that is uh, Kevin Bacon and his brother. Right? Yeah. Um, well, the, the first song that we heard, um, it's, a, it's a really fun song. The, the, uh, the music that we're hearing, the first two songs that we're going to hear are acoustic versions, actually. On the album, you've got full band versions. Of, yes. But, um, these, but it, I, I really appreciate you giving us these acoustic versions because uh, it's really nice to hear kind of a, uh, uh, a, a unique sound of kind of where the song comes from. And I was wondering if you could give us a little background about where that first song came from. The first song was called Red Summer. Uh, not, a little, not a lot of people understand what it's truly about. Red Summer, for those Shakespeareans out there, if you listen to the words, it's about the Scottish play. Uh, we, <laughs> my wife and I, we produced that play in New York City on Off-Off-Broadway, and that song inspired, well, that, that being a producer and seeing how everything's, you know, done, it inspired me. So that song, if you listen to it, it's about Lady Macbeth. Well, and, and I think that's a really cool... Uh, backstory because um, I, and personally I love Shakespeare and you know we've talked you know I, you yeah. know I've done some music for Shakespeare and things like that and I and I, I just love your your take on it and I I, I always think it's really cool um, when we can take Shakespeare and put it into a modern setting I think it's uh, really beneficial for both us as you know writers and also you know for listeners as well. Well I was never into Shakespeare at all or understood it but my wife is very into it and so I found it, you know, because the language is very tough to understand in a play. So I took that and wrote a song about who is this lady? And she's, she's brutal. She's, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, what is your, what is your writing process? Um, do you usually uh, take inspiration from things like that? Or where, where do you um, usually get your ideas when you're writing a piece of music? Uh, you know, it, it varies, you know, like Miss the Last one day just came out of nowhere. Uh, I usually, uh, as a songwriter, I am I write lyrics and then I find the music to go behind the lyrics. Yeah. That, that's kind of always the way I, I wrote. Um, and Red Summer were lyrics and then we found the music for it. Same way with Miss the Last. And a song that we're not doing here, but it's on the album, it's called New Girl. And that song... If you listen to the words, it was completely inspired by me moving to New York and falling in love with the city. So it's a new girl. Sounds mm -hmm. like I'm talking about a new girlfriend, but it's about New York City and how, what it does to you and how you can fall in love with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I really love uh, you know, that you bring in those analogies. Um, into your songwriting, um, because a song like that, like New Girl, you know, uh, someone could just listen to it, and of course it could be about a relationship, you know, with an actual person, you know, but, you know, I love that analogy of, of in, in this case, the city, you know, because absolutely, I mean, especially a city like New York, I mean, you know, you know, I think um, it's, it's a city where, 
you know, some people uh, just go and just, just fall in love, you know, with it. And, uh, um, and it's, it's just wonderful to, to, to hear that kind of analogy, I think. Yeah, if you listen to the lyrics, it's, a, it's like a city that never sleeps. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I woke up late, I had a rough night out. That, anybody who's ever lived in New York City has had that happen to them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, since we're talking about New York, like, um, what, what made you come down here and, uh, you know, leave the big city for Cecil County? Well, my career, what I was doing in New York City, it was, it was time. I, we had a good run, 18 years up there. Uh, Christine still works from New York City. Now, looks like we made a good decision now during this pandemic. But, you know, in July of 18, I left my job in New York City, kind of moved down here uh, full time. We were going back and forth uh, because of the, all the tragedy. Cause my, both my, right after my brother passed away, uh, a year later, both my parents passed away within four months of each other, uh, due to cancer. So I lost all the family in like three years. So we were doing this back and forth thing. And then I finally decided, you know what, let's base in Maryland full time, time, time to make a move. That's when I found you and started going to school and taking the audio engineering, the voice lessons, everything that your college has, which it was a blessing to find you. And since I've been here, I've been going to school with you. And that's been really fun. Yeah, well, and, and honestly, like, I'm, I'm so glad you came over. I, I, I still remember, you know, the first day they came over and we just, you know, sat down and had a really great, you know, conversation. And, um, and, and, and after you left, I remember saying to myself, God, I, I really hope he, you know, comes back and continues to be part of the program. And, and, and you did. And I'm so glad that you did. Well, I thought we had a connection because yeah. you lived in New York City when I lived in New York City. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it, that, I found that, you know, when you said all that and what your background was, I'm like, wow, this, this, is, this is like meant to be. Well, yeah. And, and, and one of the reasons I wanted to ask you about moving down is because I remember that feeling like... Um, you know, I, I didn't live there for 18 years, but still there's this connection to the city, you know, and it's really hard to, to leave, you know? And, um, yeah. and I think just, yeah. And I think just like you, like now that I'm down here, I'm really happy that I am not just because of the pandemic, although that's certainly part of it, but, but not just because of that, you know, I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I've, now that I've adjusted, you know, to the pace of life, I can see that it's a lot healthier, you know, in many ways and yeah. that kind of thing. <laughs> so. Yeah. An adjustment. Yeah. Well, um, uh, well, well, why don't we uh, listen to the next song? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the next song that we're going to hear? The next song is Down. Uh, again, this is kind of a, a corny song. It really isn't anything. It's, it, it was just actually, that was more of a melody that just, it's very catchy, I thought. So the words are kind of like all over the place. And it was kind of about a breakup or something like that. And there's really no rhyme or reason to the song. It was just, it was just something that just came out of us or came out of me. And, and it, it, that's where it was, you know, <laughs> not a whole lot about, but I just love that song. And, and that the guitar version you're hearing again, that was something that, that was the, the, the infancy of the song, same way with Red Summer, the song before I wanted to give you these two, songs that were and that's how they were discovered was through an acoustic guitar and that version that that we just did was literally the birth of the song and that's where it came from and then of course you change it and, and then it's you get the band behind it and it's much different absolutely yeah. well let's take a listen so this is down performed by scott seisler Lost his place in a sea of words and drowned at a quarter to two. They said that he laughed as his feet fell flat and his face, it was black and blue. I didn't look before I leapt and as a result I died. I forgot a farewell where the heart I kept and after a while she cried.
a feeling strange as he's never heard and shines down on my face I never had that so I'm going back to my very own special place I tried to kiss you as you slept and as a result I burn back on top a soldier's death and now the tables turn down we go down this life I wait for my rebirth she said no it's just a lie well we just dropped on earth and so little time so much to do I can't put my finger on top of you now down we go down this life for now then you run you run you run far away cause you know you can't stay yeah then you go into the sky oh. Childish games and chasing dames and a, a messing up for fun. I came here with a filthy pocket and I left this place with none. The love machine and my itching eyes, I watched it for a while. Hiding trees, the special lies, a brand new wrecking sign. Yeah, down we go. She said, no, it's just a lie. Well, we just dropped on earth. And so little time, so much to do. I can't put my finger on top of you now. Down we go, damn this life for now. Down we go, damn this life for now. Down we go, damn this life for now, now, now. Down we go, damn this life for now. Well, Scott, that was a great performance. And again, um, it's really nice uh, because for our listeners, you know, you can hear the full rock band version of that song on Scott Seisler's album, um, but this version that he just played, you know, is acoustic. And again, I think it's really nice to hear uh, the origins of a song and kind of where they come from. I think that's really nice to hear. And the other thing that I really enjoy about doing acoustic is uh, when you're in the big full rock mode, and, you know, you, the sense of uh, sometimes I think that the, the emotion, the raw emotion and the inflection of of the the voice and the tones, it gets it gets lost in the big band. You know what I mean? Like uh, miss the last, uh, which we'll get to. There, of course, that was born as an acoustic song, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, on my first EP, which is not available anymore, I still have it. I did a piano cello version of it, which was extremely haunting, and a lot of people said it was just too sad. So what we did is we i went in and with the help of uh, bobby jackson actually who's my guitarist we found this uh version that kind of felt hopeful as you as the song yeah. went on yeah absolutely mm -hmm. well speaking of miss the last uh we're going to take a look at the video here in a, in a few minutes and it's a really powerful video and you mentioned earlier that you did all the shots and all the videography uh, down here in Cecil County. And uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the video uh, and also, you know, a little bit more about the song as well. I'll, I'll tell you about the video and then I'll lead into, into the, uh, the song. Uh, we, we used a professional crew. Uh, it was Iron Pixel Media out of Florida, believe it or not, who was mm -hmm. a cinematographer and stuff. Brian Santiago, who is our band manager, he handles our social media. 
uh, he's a director also in the film. He directed it and it, it was, the video concept was his. Uh, he took the song and he knew, he knew everything, all the, you know, what, what the song was about and storyboarded it we looked it over he pitched it to me uh then we scouted locations and then uh the first shooting schedule got canceled due to weather and it was pushed back months and then we shot it here in cecil county uh we shot it in pennsylvania in my hometown uh you know so brian santiago was a huge part of the video and, and did an amazing job and also some local officials, uh, the mayor of Cecilton, Joe Zhang, was extremely helpful in helping me get these locations to shoot at, which was, it's, 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 a, it's not easy shooting. It took us it seven days of full shooting to get mm -hmm. that, what, what you're going to see. And it, 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 it's a lot of work. If anybody knows anything about film and television, it's, you know, it's a lot of work. We had, uh, yeah. you know, cameramen, you know, we had people, we had to take our own power wherever we went. We had <laughs> makeup you know because some of these places we shot in were like abandoned so but the process was it was really fun well um the video is really powerful the music is very powerful as well um and you mentioned early earlier the uh the story behind it and it's a really powerful story um you know tell us about you know why you want this song out in the world and well the song is is about uh my brother's uh, suicide and it was opiate opiate related and the opioid crisis in, in this country is, is out of control. And so I wanted to get the story out because, you know, as the song goes, it's called Miss the Last. And what it's about is a phone call that was received and a phone call that was missed. So that it's a very emotional story and it tells the story of how it happened and what we missed. So we went into this campaign, we wrote, I wrote the song. It's been, I had the song a year or two before we actually shot the video. So we thought we, if we could help other people, we were fundraising. Uh, we, we partnered with Bring Change to Mind, which is a Glenn Close organization about mental health awareness. Uh, they partnered with us. We also did a uh, benefit and a fundraiser at Chesapeake Inn in January, right before the pandemic. And I had the pleasure of multiple artists performing with me, such as you and uh, June have performed with us, which was wonderful. And, you know, we raised money for a local charity down here for suicide. So that's what we're about. Uh, we want to get the song out there more. And any money that is raised from the sale of the album, we are donating these proceeds to uh, bring change to mind or local organizations to help fight the suicide and the opioid crisis. Yeah, and I, I think it's a, it's a really just wonderful mission, you know, that you have uh, because um, you're using your music to really create change, you know, in the world. And uh, it's just, uh, uh, it, it, it makes it so, so meaningful, you know, and that we can use our talents as artists um, to be able to create change in the world, I think. That's why I wore this shirt inspired because it inspired me to do something. It wasn't, it wasn't about making money or be, about becoming famous or, or anything. I, I love performing, I love songwriting. It, it just felt, it felt natural and it was, it was a way to express myself. It was a way to heal. So I was healing through my music. Right. Well, let's take a look at the video. And um, so this is Miss the Last. It's uh, performed by the Scott Seisler Band. And we're taking a look at the full video for this one. So I hope you all enjoy it.
I stopped the first time I missed the last And why didn't you call So I could turn you back Uh, well, Scott, thanks again for sharing that with us, uh, sharing the video and sharing the story with us. It, it really is a uh, powerful message. And, um, you know, again, I really think it's wonderful that you're using your music to create change in the world. You know, I, I noticed that you look very comfortable in the video, you know, not just as a musician, but also, you know, as an, as an actor. And um, you mentioned earlier that you have a little background uh, in acting as well. Yeah, it's, I have a very interesting career or life. Uh, I uh, started out as a water skier. Um, I, you know, down here living, we always had a summer home in the Bay as a kid and got into water skiing. And somehow that turned into a career. And I started professional water skiing at theme parks, theme parks uh, all over the country, like, you know, SeaWorld, uh, SeaWorld type things. Uh, uh, the Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, I did the water circus for a while. And that was a big show in front of the, you know, 5,000 people a night we'd get there. So I was always performing in front of people. Then it led to like Great Adventure. I did that show for a while. Then the ski shows changed and they went to live action stunt shows. And I performed in the Lethal Weapon stunt show 
for a number of years. And that was a, a live action, you know, 17 minute mini movie with explosions and all kinds of stuff. That's actually where I met my wife, Christine. And then that led us to New York City and started to pursue, you know, small roles in acting and stuff like that. But I really, music, I kind of gravitated to music more than I did the acting, although I, I, I enjoy the acting and the film and the television and the creating of all. Of it. So I think that's why it kind of, it, it felt, I felt, it felt natural and normal. And, 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 and again, uh, having a great director is all the, can really make, make you look real good. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, yeah, well, I, I think it was uh, just a wonderful production overall. So congratulations on uh, producing that and creating it. Thank you very much. It was a, it was a, a, a love, a, a love, love thing to do, although it was very painful, but yet it was very therapeutic. Well, before we go, um, can you tell us uh, where we can find out about more about you and also more about your band? Well, we have a really great website. It's, uh, you know, scottseisler.com, the Scott Seisler Band. You can just look us up. It's, it's Scott, S-C-O-T-T-S-E-I-S-L-E-R. If you Google me, it'll all come up. Our music's on Spotify. It's on uh, iTunes, Apple Play, Amazon. You can get it anywhere. We have merchandise too. If you go to the website, everything is there. Our shows that we're performing, upcoming shows. Uh, we were really excited for this summer, uh, but obviously everything got canceled because we did have some festivals lined up. That was our next goal was to play festivals. So we're kind of waiting for life to get back to normal. So that's another reason why we're going to push these uh, you know, we want to re-release the video and, and get it back out there and, and do more digital stuff right now until, until, until we can start getting back together and doing live things, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's been a really difficult time, I think, for performing artists. Um, I mean, not, not just performing artists, for everyone, you know, in the entire world. Um, but in our little world, um, you know, it's, it's definitely been a shock, I think, uh, because you know, we're so used to what you just said, being together and rehearsing and performing. And, um, you know, not having that community, I think, uh, has really affected a lot of performing artists, I think. I, I agree because you miss that interaction or that camaraderie, like like yeah. even sports stuff like that, you know, the, the creative juices get flowing when you're with other people. And I miss school. I miss, I yeah. miss class. I miss, I miss my voice lessons with June. I miss our ensemble, you know, it's just, yeah. it's sad, but you know, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'm, I, I'm very hopeful. Exactly. And, and, um, you know, I think, you know, I, and I, I do think it is good to do what we can, you know, and, you know, keep a positive attitude and, you know, things you're mentioning with digital stuff, you know, you've, you've also been part of, uh, the Rockestra, you know, videos that we've done and, and, you know, I was, um, talking to someone earlier in the week and, you know, that, that's my whole goal with that as well, is just putting something positive out there, you know, just that we can have fun with and at least try to keep the community together in some way, you know, so. Yeah, I agree. What you did with the Rockstra, that's, that's, that was one genius, two, a lot of fun, a lot of work on your side. I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't think people understand that doing a Zoom uh, or a, a virtual, like where somebody's playing somewhere and, you know, piecing that all together, it's, it's, it's a, it's a lot more work than I think people realize. So uh, my hat off to you, especially with as many musicians as you put up on that screen. That had to be daunting task. Well, well, I, I appreciate you mentioning that um, because it, it is a lot of work, but um, but it, but it's also a lot of fun, you know. And it's uh, and it's great to have. Uh, honestly, like you know, it's felt really good to you know have you know the people from the college and the community you know together, including you, you know, um, you know, because uh, at least at least we can stay together some way. And like, you know, when, when I'm working and I'm watching everyone on the screen, it's, you know, obviously not the same thing, but at least like I can feel like we're, <laughs> we're all there yeah. together. So, and, and hopefully that's, that's the way everyone else feels too when they're watching it, you know, hopefully they feel like, okay, well, we're not, you know, literally together, but at least we can be together in some way, so. Yeah, yeah we created something together that was very good. Yeah, well, um, Scott, it's been great talking with you. Um, I really appreciate everything uh, that you've done. I really appreciate you being part of the program and all your support of the program. And uh, 
you know, and I'm really proud of everything you've done uh, with your band and uh, with the video and with your recording. And uh, it's really a pleasure um, to know you both as a student and also as a person. So thank you for uh, being part of the program and being part of this uh, interview. Well, thank you. And uh, I believe we have a, a lot more to do and, uh, and we'll be together a long time, I believe. Absolutely. Well, I very much look forward to it. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. All right. I'll see you later. And thanks to all of you for joining us for this performance today. Join us next time for more great performances on camera concerts. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay sane. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.